Holiday at Lake Majuri. This is the tale of Sylvia Cooper, and of a most unfortunate blooper. It took place while she was away, on her summer holiday. The dear lass she was so excited, but her foreign trip was blighted by a roller coaster ride which ended bad. She could have cried. The sun was out, the sky was blue, a promised super-duper view lay above the Lake Majuri in its fine and splendid glory. Syl jumped in the cable car, went up the mountain very far. The top was sadly quite a dump, perhaps due to the recent slump. There was a solitary calf, and it was really rather naff. The place was barely two-star rated, yet the vista compensated. Water stretched out mile on mile for all to see, and all did smile. Then to add to all the fun was a fiendish bobsleigh run. A simple, twisty, turny ride, like an elongated slide, built on rails, a metal snake that overlooked the stunning lake. Dexter jumped on like a boy, keen to try the fast-paced toy, and Sylvia said, I'm going too, just show me what I have to do. The young lad told her, Push her to go, or pull to break and make it slow. It's easy, but be careful now. Enjoy the ride, signora. Ciao. As she whizzed, the car careered at an alarming breakneck speed. Sill's skirt flew up into her face. There was no time to think. Brace, brace. Then came the most almighty crash. A thunderous thud, a hellish smash. I've done me back in, Sylvia cried, but onward went the nightmare ride. It pulled her up, and on and on, the homeward straight was very long, and when poor Sylvia reached the top, she struggled out and had to flop onto the floor in pain and shock, and only in a summer frock. It was now cold, that mountain air, four thousand feet up high up there, shivering, shaking all the while, yet still she gave a weakish smile. The young Italian lad came out to see what it was all about. He offered to call out the dock to help the pain and help the shock. He said that as she'd come a cropper, they might have to get a chopper. But then he said, now it's a van. We'll get here pronto, that's the plan. Suddenly she turned to Dex and said, oh no, I've lost my specs. As someone who communicates every day with chums and mates, no contact would drive her insane, and would exacerbate the pain. A photo, text, or WhatsApp call, she likes to stay in touch with all, but with specs nowhere to be seen, how would she see the tiny screen? Don't leave me like this in the lurch, can you get the boys to search? And this they did along the track, thank heavens found them, brought them back. When finally help did arrive, there now ensued a bumpy drive. Down the mountain track, down, down, it took an hour to get to town. Sylvia went upon a stretcher. By her side was hubby Dexter. The young girl in the ambulance commented with nonchalance. My mum's your age, what were you thinking on that ride? Had you been drinking? Poor Sylvia was put to rest in a clinic, not the best. Oh my goodness, what a dive. Would she make it out alive? Harsh white lights above the bed, shining down onto her head. Daylight impossible to find, windows covered by a blind, no aircon and no fresh air. She would suffocate in there. No sanitising, hand-washed stuff. The whole place was oh so rough. And the public lavatory, that's another germy story. No loo paper and no soap. One just had to live in hope that no infections would be spread to the patients in their bed. They took an x-ray of her back. It revealed a nasty crack. The remedy was lots of rest. Not what Mrs. C does best. She doesn't like to lie down still. Would she find the strength, the will? Day on day she lay dead bored. Time went so slow, oh lordy lord. We moan about the NHS, but here was a far greater mess. The whole business of hygiene did not exist, it was barely clean. A place just right for breeding bugs, an open cabinet full of drugs. All those meds upon the shelf, t'was tempting just to help oneself. 
In England there'd be lock and key, and essays on health and safety. Poor Sylvia felt she had been cursed, hard to think she's being nursed. The food left much to be desired, the chef should really have been fired. A most unappetising dish of watery soup and sloppy fish. Not the pizzas or the vino, nor the frothy cappuccino that would normally be seen in this land of fine cuisine. She had a taste she tried to pick, but it nearly made her sick. How could she eat in any case, when on her bra back and in a brace? But although the food was vile, she battled on with cheery smile. In such pain she squirmed, squirmed and wriggled, yet she braved it, even giggled. Indomitable indeed, even in her hour of need, feeling awful, feeling rough, our northern lass was mighty tough. This situation did so suck, through <laughs> gritted teeth she groaned, oh dear. Stressed and worried was our Dexter, never been much of a texter, but he had to quickly start for information to impart, to let the friends and family know about this dreadful tale of woe. Dashed were his hopes of getting out to see the scenery round about. Instead, daily he must go on the buses to and fro to Verbania miles away every night and every day. In true style, he laughed and joked. About the time when he got soaked, desperate to get back to town, the bus was late, the rain came down. While local kids stopped for a fag, Dex sorted out his soggy bag. He turned away for just one sec, and missed the bus. Oh, flippin' heck. Meanwhile, Sylvia lay in pain. To get some sleep, she tried in vain. She longed for them to kill the light, and for some quiet time at night. But these Italians are quite loud, a noisy lot when in a crowd. She wondered how long she'd be stuck in this hellhole. What bad luck. And when the bedpan was a must, towards her it was duly thrust. No thought to pull the curtain round, to block the view or dim the sound. The nurses didn't seem to think that Sylvia might blush quite pink. Dexter's such a clever chap, said you must download an app to help you ask those questions, dear, which might help you get out of here. So Sylvia did and shouted, BINGO! Suddenly she spoke the lingo. She was able to say nappy. This made her extremely happy. It might help her on the journey, as she lay upon a gurney. Finally, it was all set. She was to leave by private jet. Thank goodness that wish she was insured, for no more could she have endured. Things at last, they went to plan. She left the airport at Milan. Touching down on British soil, she felt just like a princess royal. As she caught a glimpse of Blighty, she sent thanks to the Almighty. And that was the tale of Sylvia Cooper, a truly brave and stoic trooper.